Hello, I am Yogini Sunita and this is Meditation, Yoga and Stuff podcast. I believe my dharma or my life's purpose is to share my understanding of meditation, yoga and Ayurveda, holistic healing science of India. I make these amazing wisdoms accessible and adaptable for present time. So let's start. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Couple of weeks ago, I have done a podcast on menopause and uh, from your feedback, uh, you want to learn more. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that. So the podcast was about Ayurveda and menopause, Ayurveda's understanding of menopause. So what is Ayurveda? Ayurveda is a healing science of India. This science is a holistic science and in Ayurveda, the understanding of human's life is really wonderful. Ayurveda gives us a lot of suggestions about how to live our life to our fullest capacity. And to do so, we need to understand our dosha. What is dosha? Ayurveda, in Ayurveda, our constitution means our dosha. And this is the constitution is a concept where it is believed in Ayurveda there are three types of constitution, vata or air and space dominant constitution, pitta which is fire and air, water dominant constitution and kapha which is a water and earth dominant constitution. And these are elements we are talking about. So these five elements are existing in all of us. And out of these five elements, we may have few dominant elements in us. And that gives the, the personality traits, that gives our physical makeup, that gives our skin color, our eye luster, in our eyes, uh, color of our eyes, color of our hair. It is not about the race, but it is about bone structure. It is about inherent qualities we have. So it is beyond the race. It is uh, all races have a vata, pitta, kapha in them. So we are now going to tune into what is vata. So let's try and understand vata personality. If we look in the nature, what is vata? Vata is, uh, or air element is fast moving. It is lightest of all. So air and space element both are light. Then also the air and uh, space element have very drying quality to it. So Vata person will have dry skin, dry hair. Vata person loves constant change. They don't like routine. They are fast moving, but there is also crash and burn uh, in them. So they they will be really like a whirlwind entering in the room, really, you know, fast moving, fast, fast speaking. But at the same time, they also have crash and burn in them them as well because they that is constant yo-yo. There is no regularity in the life. So this is the Vata personality. Then if we look at Pitta personality, Pitta personality is heating because fire and water together can create steam. And so this is a personality which is, these are the natural leaders of the our society. These are the personality who was passionate about the causes and they, they are very charismatic personalities. So that's the Pitta. And then the Kapha personality is a little bit heavier side. They will have heavy bones, maybe round body. And they are a little bit slower, like a slow morning start. It takes them a little bit time to grasp information, but once they grasp it, they will have it really stored in them. So if we look at the mental makeup of Vata person, Vata person who is the fast moving personality with air and space in them, Vata's mental makeup is a lack of decision making, but they're also very creative. So this creativity is a gift for Vata person, beautiful creative ideas, hundreds of creative ideas, but uh, taking them to completion is, is rarely happens with Vata. Those ideas, when the Pitta person understands them, they will take that and make that happen. So Pitta person are the doers, they will be 
taking those projects really, Wata's ideas, and then bring them into reality. And the kafa person is almost like an administration job, so they will make sure that these projects keep running. So that's how the world, uh, from Ayurvedic point of view, now, how it is related to menopause and how we react to menopause depending on our dosha. During the menopause, vata person will have extremely dry skin. Everything dries out more really quickly. Menstrual bleeding uh, its also quite irregular in general in their life. And during the time of menopause, if it is even more irregular. There will be more dryness in the skin and uh, all over the system, as I mentioned earlier. There will be a digestive discomfort for vata because the even digestive system dries out, so constipation and things like that. And they will also have a trouble sleeping. So disturbed sleep is vata's. In general, vata will have like a very light sleep anyway. And during the menopause, it it heightens. So sleeping can be really big issue for vata during this time. And then vata's nature or vata constitution's nature is uh, anxiousness, worry and fear. It will heighten this time as well. There is also possibility of bone loss, so bone density and all these issues. Like again, drying. So everything is drying, so even the bones are drying. So that's what happens for Vata. I will talk about how we can look after this uh, condition. Now that this, we know that if this is happening, it is what it is. So we do not judge that. But how can we help ourselves? Or first, we can, if you're not into the state of menopause, how can we prevent it? So from Ayurvedic point of view, we will look at the diet. We'll make sure the diet is easy to digest throughout Vata's life. And regularity in diet will be very helpful. Then also regular oil massage will be extremely important for Vata person. So, you know, oil your whole system you can use the vata oils which are available easily available online so good buy from a good source vata oil and massaging with vata oil will really help rest as much as possible and you can also use restorative yoga restorative yoga has a capacity to help you calm down so that will reduce the anxiousness worry and fear if you don't know what is restorative yoga it is a, a restorative yoga is where we use lots of props to calm our system down. So we will be holding poses for a long period of time. Uh, but uh, it will be in such a way that you will be uh, completely relaxed. So it will help you to take from sympathetic mode to parasympathetic mode. And for Vata, the busy mind is one of the conditions. So if when you do the restorative yoga, it will help you to calm your whole system down, whole nervous system calms down, the mind calms down. And the beautiful side effect of that is it that relaxation will help you to reduce the unnecessary worries and fear. So it's it has a really beautiful meditative effect. Also, Vata needs to have regularity in, uh, in your life. So you can do the practices which are calming, which are helping you to um, enrich your life with uh, a beautiful outlet to your creativity. Also making sure to look after yourself. A lot of nurturing, a lot of caring for yourself is very important. So self-care will be very important for all doshas really. Now let's look at Pitta Dosha. So Pitta Dosha's symptom will be uh, hot flashes, irritability, heavy bleeding in perimenopausal state, skin discomfort and imbalances. There will be anger, irritability, jealousy, criticism, competitiveness. It will heighten this time during the time of menopause. You will also feel that uh, feeling of excess body heat and heat related imbalance because it is a heating constitution so you'll notice all this is happening so a lot of hot flashes 
irritability is very common and then skin heating up uh, also like you can see the redness of the skin this is all the pitta constitutions symptoms of menopause so how can we look after this so again ayurveda is quite uh, in ayurveda the diet is very valuable like basically bring in more cooling stuff in your diet like more cucumbers more cooling stuff which will help you to cool your system so reduce the coffees the wines the alcohol as much as possible and focus on again nurturing and looking after yourself in this state the self care is very important the, because pitta is a doer constitution pitta person has done a lot of work and they find it very uh, difficult to slow down and since they they are not performing their 100% during this time it is very difficult for pitta to come to terms with slowing down so learning how to slow down learning to enjoy the life slow down in a sense like you know taking more time out for yourself valuing what you accomplished so far and celebrating that in a positive way finding simple joys of the life this is very important for pitta to tune into you don't have to be 100% doing everything it is time to now slow down and enjoy the fruits of your labor look after yourself take care of yourself it say it is difficult for pitta to slow down and so learning how to slow down will be a beautiful thing for pitta i would suggest from the diet point of view pitta needs to eat easily digestible food because what happens that pitta had a strong metabolism till now and now with the menopause the hormonal change is happening the digestive system is not responding the way it used to or in pitta's mind the way it should do and so what happens that the pitta ma- wants to eat the same stuff but now it is they are not able to digest it so digesting uh, or changing your diet using the food which is easy to digest is going to really help pitta small portions will help as well and also pitta is high on, on moving or activity so notice if the activity is heating then you need to change that activity to something else for example if you are going for long jogs or cycling and things like that maybe it is time to go for long walks instead of jogging things like that small changes that will help you to do your movements but at the same time with a lot of awareness so bring awareness into your movements and also the restorative yoga is going to be helpful for you as well so pitta person needs that balance of activity and relaxation so learn to relax through restorative yoga restorative yoga is a practice where as i said earlier that you know you take lots of props yoga props and you hold the poses for long period of time and the beauty of this practice is going to help you to cool down but yet give you that uh, satisfaction that you have done the practice it will give take you from sympathetic mode to parasympathetic mode which is really wonderful pitta person need to understand that the the balance of sympathetic and parasympathetic is very important and so it is a learning for pitta once they get it they understand it it will help them a lot so reduce caffeine uh, eat more a comfortable easy to digest food reduce the portions and also uh, change the activities from heating uh, or or really producing lot of heat to cooling calming practices so this is for pitta meditation will help as well also it will be helpful to do stress redu- reducing stuff as well let's move towards kapha so kapha's uh, tendency will be weight gain so kapha in general throughout their life they have this issue of weight gain anyway and the kapha person as i said like they are slow in the morning so the morning slow start 
weight gain is there thing then also loneliness feeling sad unmotivated is kafas way to go also greediness is one of the kafas tendencies uh, basically holding on to stuff so kafa will do that it's uh, kafas nature and also kafa likes routine so a lot of routine activities and also the kafa uh, gets really overwhelmed with too much information go gets overwhelmed with uh, too much socializing and stuff like that so that's kafa personality and so how that will manifest into the menopause is definitely kafa will weight gain kafa feels sad and unmotivated more during this time then also they will feel that decrease of concentration or kind of like brain fog and dullness and then feeling of overwhelm or depression is kafas uh, way to go here during the, the perimenopausal pause the bled- bleeding can be heavy uh the kafa person feels uh, dull constant pain heaviness in the body this is due to hormonal changes and for kafa how can we help kafa person so the kafa person needs to again look at the diet kafa has a tendency of eating sweet and heavy stuff fatty stuff so reducing that then also eating more food which has a little bit spices so the spices will be really helpful for kafa and also keep moving and like even though if you don't feel motivated find a way to motivate yourself join walking groups or you know go for walk uh, regularly or any activity which gives you joy find the activity that gives you joy and moving will be really really valuable for your joints because what happens that when we start gaining weight it becomes really too much for our joints sometimes and then the joint starts complaining and it becomes vicious cycle of pain so kafa needs to start moving kafa needs to do a joyous thing at least once a day and also making sure that you have your sangha your community around you community will help you to keep motivated so something to bring motivation in your life again dietary changes will be very very important because uh, we are what we eat so if you are noticing that if you're feeling heavy and dull notice that what you're eating and try and change that to more uplifting food so what is uplifting food so eating fresh greens eating the food which is easy to digest eating the food in s- smaller quantities if you think that you need a maybe plate full of food maybe reducing that a little bit every time and start seeing that it it is really sometimes that portion really matters so reducing the portion and also a company of good people so this will be kafas activity if you are going to do the asana classes yoga classes i suggest moving gentle moving classes will be very very helpful for you on my uh, website you can find there is a gentle uh, movement class it is free asana class feel free to take advantage of that you can practice with that or you can also download for all uh, vata pitta kapha download those four meditations which i have on my website that will help you to bring that peace and calm in your life so we basically noticing for all doshas basically we are noticing what we are eating the diet should be juiciness in our diet because in general for all doshas we are uh, losing our juiciness of our life so this is a vata time of our life so that means it is a drying time of our life so whichever dosha you have sometimes we have combination of dosha like like we have maybe vata pitta or vata kapha pitta kapha something like that and that's okay too so you'll notice that you may have symptoms from like maybe multiple doshas or from all three doshas and that's okay so how can we still look after ourselves during this time 
So I suggest increase juiciness. <laughs> and so what does that mean is uh, bring in more practices that will help you to feel nourished. So nourishing yourself as much as possible on all aspects from your food to your relationship to into every part of your life, nourishing yourself. And oil massages is going to help you a lot for all three doshas. You are going to be very beneficial with um, oil massage. So if you don't know what dosha you are, don't worry about it. Choose an oil which will feel nice on your skin, which you enjoy. And that is right for you. So find uh, oil, almond oil or any oil which will work for you which will help your skin to feel nourished and happy. And then also being calm. So what happens that because this is Vata time of our life, our mind goes into a lot of chatter because it is a big change, right? So there are a lot of things happening with hormonal system. Our body is trying to adjust to this new you, right? And so what we can do is bring in more calm. Is the practices where bring in more joyous things in your life simple joys of your life enjoying those simple joys so maybe nature walk going for walks with your friends enjoying that cup of coffee with your friend meditation practice restorative yoga will be also very helpful restorative yoga if you don't know what it is i have a course uh, on on demand course feel free to Download that, that will give you so much of understanding of restorative yoga and yoga nidra. Yoga nidra is a healing relaxation technique, which we can actually have a aim, a goal of the practice, which is sankalpa. And that will help you to bring some aim or goal in your life as well as bring calm in your life. So restorative yoga and Yoga Nidra teacher training I have uh, on my website now. If you're not a yoga teacher, don't worry about it. You will still learn a lot. There is no prerequisite for it. If you are a yoga practitioner, you will understand it more. But if you're not, that's okay too. You can still learn a lot from that and you can bring restorative yoga in your life. Then strengthening the digestive fire in your life. So the Agni... As, as we call it in Ayurveda, is a digestive fire. So in this period, the menopause, because so, man, so many things are hormonally happening in our system, our digestive system is also trying to adjust to this new us. So it will be irregular, it will be dry, it will be, uh, sometimes it will be too much, sometimes it will be not at all there. So try and understand what's happening in your system. Listen to your body. Just, don't just go ahead and, and eat it because you used to. Really listen how your body is reacting to the food. If it is heavy to reduce that, our regular diet, we need to bring in more fresh, beautiful tasting, amazing, joyous food experiences in our life. And this will help you to digest easily. So easy digest food, which will help you to bring in juiciness in your digestive system as well. So consciously drinking water, regular water, intake of the water. If you drink, if you are comfortable, you can drink warm water. I'm not saying the tea like that hot water, but slightly room temperature or slightly warm than that. And that will help you with your digestive system. Also, you can use teas like there are amazing teas you can use like a cumin, fennel, coriander tea. You can also increase more turmeric in your diet. You can also use saffron and hing. Hing is uh, asaphotitia. And hing is really uh, easy to help us to digest. But how much? Like a tiny, tiny pinch. So we add that in our uh, dal. Dal is a lentil soup which we make. So if you are interested in all this, just contact me. I'll help you with what's happening in your life. And I'll give you suggestions for your health conditions it's not just menopause i help with all health conditions so you can connect with me by contacting me through my website the 
dash wellness business dot com. Also, what else can we do during this time? We need to also tune in to the life we have lived so far, finding peace in that as well, because there could be possibility of wrong or right decision, and doesn't matter. It is what it is. So rather than pondering with that and mind constantly going through that with those that stress, anger, resentment, irritation, sadness about the past, just accepting what it is, and I'm saying it like just accept it as it is, but I know that how hard it is. So this is where meditation will really help. So if you don't have meditation practice, please add a meditation practice. guided meditation will really help also if meditation is something you tried and it didn't work maybe we find a practice that will work for you something that will bring you peace and calm we are all unique fingerprint of divine so what we will need is going to be unique and you know yourself the best now we have experiences in our life now we are rich with experiences we have this reservoir of experiences in our life and we know what really works and what doesn't work during this time so so from that understanding pick a practice which you really feel comfortable and and relax and nourished and that could be your kind of like meditation practice it could be nature walk or it could be tai chi whatever works for you really bring in practice which will give you joy i have been asked like what kind of diet uh, for all doshas i would say like you know vata balancing diet which means cooked food which is easy to digest and add little bit spices now pitta person the fiery person should be little bit aware of spices so reduce spices in your diet but vata and kapha can have spices in their diet and the food needs to be a really joyous experience easy to digest uh, smaller portions is way to go another thing we can do is adding teas in your diet so you can add like peppermint tea or chamomile peppermint combination tea or you can have cumin tea all these teas will help you or aid your digestion so find a way to increase the capacity of your digestive fire another practice as we can do is regular asana movement joint freeing series of yoga is really good it's called pavan muktasan series pranayam or breathing practices are really wonderful the breathing practices which is nadi shodhana which is which balances both hemispheres of the brain is really wonderful during this time and why is that because it is designed to work with both hemispheres of the brain it is designed to oxygenate our system so maybe 8 to 10 rounds of that in the morning with empty stomach will help yoga nidra is absolutely wonderful or any relaxation technique that will work for you I have done a yoga nidra episode I'll put a link for that feel free to take advantage of that then you can also bring in awareness into having good company we need a really company which will help us to really nurture care and really heal and so the sangha as we call it in wisdom of yoga is really really helpful because like minded people can really help us to elevate ourselves i have community which is called the wellness tribe and this is such a beautiful community where people uh healers basically working together helping each other elevating each other if you want to be part of the community please contact me i'll help you how to become part of that and there is also information on my website i will put all the information about community as well in the show notes so have something like a community or people in your life which you feel comfortable to spend time with and they are helping you to enhance your all abilities and yourself so have this community and then 
you can do practices like panchakarma panchakarma are the five uh, combination of ayurvedic practices uh, depending on your health condition the panchakarma practices will change these practices are available in india so i take group of people to india so if you're interested you can register your name and i will let you know when i'm going to take the group next to india the, if that you don't want to do that that's all right you can start doing these practices here in this now in ayurveda the menopause is is graceful so how can we bring in this gracefulness into our menopause how can we bring in this understanding that whatever is happening in our life it's okay in this moment in this now because this is where we meant to be when we understand that and when we try to understand okay if there is dryness i am going to replenish it with oils if there is digestive issue i am going to look after it by modifying the diet so simple things like that if there is hot flashes i'm going to look into that what really triggers it sometimes we don't even know what triggers it and that's okay try and modify diet and see if that works try and adjust that and be also gentle with yourself you know it's very important to look after yourself because this is the time this is really time when we need to look after ourselves so nurturing caring practices really lot of uh, self awareness self love self care is going to be really important during this time i hope that this podcast episode is helpful for you and i really love to hear the feedback from you i'll put all the show no in information in the show notes for yoga nidra for my restorative yoga and ayurveda teacher training the wellness tribe information as well so feel free to join wellness tribe or contact me if you need a mentoring session for your wellness i'm happy to help you any way i can thank you for being here i really appreciate you bye for now thank you for tuning in i really appreciate that that you're taking this time out of your day Don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye for now.